Best class knows that does happen. <laughs> Zoom, you're all here because you would like to learn more a little bit or a little bit more about the Master of Accountancy or about the Mac, as you'll hear me refer to from now on. So here's a little bit why what we're going to cover. So why should you consider the Mac? There's a few common misconceptions that I've heard periodically throughout the years. What are they? How, how can we put those misconceptions to rest? What are the requirements? So what kind of courses will you take? What are required? What kind of electives can you take? Now, if, since you're a UNI student, you can actually start taking graduate classes as you're finishing up. So that's the integrated math, and we'll talk about that. And how that looks is very different for every student. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I have about 50 students that I'm managing their plans of study that are either current or uh, coming up. And I would say I have probably about 45 different ones. So everybody's looks different depending on your wish, where you're at with your undergrad studies. So it's a lot of things that we work out one on one. And, uh, you know, I help keep track of that. Uh, the application requirements. So what do I need to do to get in? And part of that is also what are, you know, what should you try to achieve in order to get admitted into the MAC? Um, we won't talk much about the GMAT because we've actually changed the rules. Uh, so as long as you graduate from UNI with your accounting degree and take all the upper level accounting courses here, you will not need to take the GMAT. And you have to have a 3.0, okay? So those are the requirements, we'll go over that. A little bit about finances and some of the additional financial aid available for graduate students. Uh, we'll talk through some examples of schedules, but as I said, everyone seems to be different. So kind of take these as a little bit of templates and we'll go from there. And what should you do now? And that's going to depend on what level. We have everybody in here from a few freshmen. We're happy to see you. It's not too early to start thinking about this. To those that are in intermediate to either now or uh, last semester. So we have quite a variety here. I am happy to have you as you have questions. Just give me a wave, shout them out, and we'll answer them. Otherwise, we'll answer some at the end. Okay? So just a little bit who will be here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Professor Amy Igo. Um, I am the director of the Master of Accountancy program here, which means I help with all the advising, uh, make sure all of your paperwork's through, interact with the grad college as needed, um, and then of course I teach in that program. I'm also an associate professor in accounting here. Joining us soon, he went upstairs to make sure nobody was wandering upstairs looking for the session, is Professor Joe Ugrin. And if you haven't met him, say hi. Um, he is our department chair in the RSM Professor of Accounting. I got everybody that was last time. All right. Awesome. It's our department. There was a door on the side of so. <laughs> We're good. Yeah, that is our. <laughs> yeah. And joining us later, she is in the middle of CPA review, so she'll be joining us about 5.30, will be Emily Doniker, and she's a current MAC student. So if you have questions that you'd want to ask to somebody who's currently in the program, rather than what Joe and I would think, she'll be a great resource for you. And if you don't know Emily, she is also the tutor in the lounge, which I don't know the number of the lounge, but the one right across from my office who, who tutors for intermediate intermediate in cost. So she'll be joining us. Uh, she's always very enthusiastic about the MAC program. So uh, we'll make sure to ask her why she thinks the MAC program is worthwhile, okay? So we'll set her up with that question. I've already kind of given, given her a hint. All right, so here's some of the reasons why you might consider the MAC. I think one of the big ones is if you're looking at the CPA exam and you need the 150 hours, you might as well leave with two degrees rather than one. So uh, that would be a good explicit reason why. For other reasons, you know, more the internal, there, there's a lot of great reasons why you would do that. First of all, I think it be, lets you become a more well-rounded professional as you enter your first job. A lot of the things we do in the master's program are very different than what you do in your undergraduate program. 
we're tackling a little bit more of that gray area. Um, you know, some of the real world problems that don't necessarily have a right answer. So you have to be able to analyze and, and look for the right answer. A lot of it's more teamwork uh, and more project oriented than just working some problems and taking a test. You have to know those things, but it kind of takes you a step above and some of that critical thinking. Uh, so just solving bigger problems than what you have before. Those are some of the reasons I feel that the master's program is worthwhile. Uh, Professor Yubin, would you jump in and say some of your? Um, the, uh, well, for, for a couple of very practical reasons. One, um, you know, some jobs actually you know, ask you to have a master's degree, mm -hmm. and this is an opportunity to get a master's degree in one year's time versus I think people that, that leave school with an undergraduate and then you know years later the typical thing you might do is probably an MBA or something later. Mm -hmm. That takes a lot longer. Um, and you can get a master's degree just like just integrate a pregnancy program. And so you there, there are sometimes jobs, particularly government jobs and things like that. A lot of them that require a master's degree. Um, mm -hmm. I, I could tell you I wouldn't be here today if I didn't have a master's degree. Ditto. Because of, <laughs> and that would have just been another barrier to um, uh, more graduate school to become an academic. That you never know what's in your career path. Mm -hmm. So if you have an opportunity to add um, an advanced degree to your undergraduate degree, I think it, it's, it, there's very practical reasons. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, you mentioned uh, re the research class. Not so, yet, but we will. Oh, you were gonna. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, when we get to what classes, but okay, you can kind of allude to uh, it. Well, you were ta you kind of mentioned, um, you know, research into um, great questions and that sort of stuff. Well, guess what you do on your first day on the job in accounting is somebody gives you a question and says, "Go find the answer," and you do a lot of research in your first couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, it feels like grunt work, but you're actually learning a lot of stuff while you're doing the research, and that's just sort of like that hasn't changed. And well, as long as I've been out of college, it's been that same model, and it probably was for decades before um, before that. This sort of like sort of like learn on the on the fly sort of thing when you get the firms, and it seems like that's the way it works at all. Of them. Yeah, they have some formalized things that get you get you acquainted mm -hmm. with their firm, but not um, the, the, the grunt work of, of digging down into stuff. So. Mm -hmm. And definitely, um, it's, a, it's a lot more. I think um, graduate classes are a lot more fun because it's not just. Um, I don't know. Yeah, just, mm -hmm. like you said, just Agree. going through your books, doing problems. Everything's very black and white. The real world isn't black and white. You know? The real world isn't like disconnected from people. The real world mm -hmm. is actually people working together in groups and teams and answering problems that there is no exact right or wrong answer for and mm -hmm. you just kind of come up with the best one mm -hmm. and go from there. And part of it is to be able to justify why, how you came up with that answer mm -hmm. and I think that's something that we really get into a lot more. Going off the job, uh, a lot of the first year or entry level jobs may not require that master's, but it is a lot easier as somebody who did a master's seven, eight years after graduating. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish I would have done it, you know, right in a row because I think it would have been a lot easier, you know, to get through some of those things. So keep that in mind, partially because, you know, some of your skills right now are at the best that they will be. Test taking, you know, uh, things like that. It's kind of like getting a CPA exam done while you're, you know, you, you, stay, you mm -hmm. come here to do the review and get the exam done. The graduate program is the same way because mm -hmm. a good chance four or five years out, you might want to be doing it, and then it's going right. to be, um, well, mm -hmm. take it from two people who did it mm -hmm. part-time yeah. at night, The master, yeah. later on, just like studying for the CPA exam was, mm -hmm. you know, at night after work, well, then, after I got done with my CPA exam, then I went on to, okay, the next step was I needed to go over and get a master's degree, and it was, took me four years. Mm -hmm. My master's took three. Yeah. Um, I have a CMA rather than a CPA, but same thing. I was studying for it at night and weekends, which took about two years off and on because I was able to take it more in chunks than what you were able to with the CPA. So 
I don't know what misconceptions or questions you've had or things you've heard about uh, the MAC program. Um, some things that I've heard, it's impossible to get in the MAC. No, obviously we have students in the MAC every year, so it's not impossible. If you're an A or B student, so if you got a B or B minus and above in intermediate and have in, we're looking at the four core classes, intermediate one, two, cost and AIS for your admissions, you should really consider the MAC. Um, you know, that's who we're really tailoring that to. The graduate college requires that you have an overall GPA of 3.0, and then we really heavily, for your admissions decision, look at your upper level and counting classes. So yes, if you're anywhere in that range, if you're kind of borderline, come talk to me. We can have that conversation and look and see what do you need to do to possibly, you know, push your application up a little bit higher. So don't hesitate to talk to me. Don't let any of this stop you from having that conversation. Um, I cannot do a double major and the MAC. Yes, we have several students. Does it take a little bit more creative scheduling? Maybe, but so far there's, I haven't had a student that we haven't been able to figure out how to get them graduated in the time frame that they were really looking at. Maybe they wanted to graduate in May and they had to take a May term class so they didn't graduate till summer, but we're talking real close here. We're not talking extending a, you know, a significant amount of time. What I've heard is I'm not looking at public accounting. I shouldn't be in the Mac. Well, actually the skills that you're developing are probably used, if not as much, even more in industry. Because you, depending on where you're going, you might get to work on some of those teams, especially if it's a smaller company, you might be more integrated into some of those problems than you would be. Um, honestly, some of the students that I have graduated from the MAC three, four years ago, they're actually progressing a little bit faster in their careers than others. That's not a guarantee, but I think some of that relates to the skills. There are also students who had high drive and motivation too. So, you know, everything plays within each other. Um, the graduate degree may not help you for that first job, but I see a lot of jobs for people or that are looking for somebody with four or five years experience that are also requiring a master's degree at that point. Or if they're not requiring it, it's preferred, which means if there's 10 candidates, the five that have master's degree are gonna start rising up. And so anything you can do to differentiate yourself, the better. Employers don't care if I have the MAC. I have heard employers say that, no, come work for us. You don't need the CPA, you can get out in four years. I also think that can be very short-sighted. That is great if that's the only company you're going to work for for 30 years. The odds of that are extremely remote. Most people are changing jobs every three, five years. So keep in mind what you do now can help you, you know, five, 10, 15 years out. And plus all the skills that you have will help you a lot better in the future. Other things that I've heard that were maybe uh, objections to pursuing the MAC, there are a lot of papers and writing. I'm not going to say, just, you know, put that one aside. Yeah, there is. But honestly, that's one of the skills that you do need as a professional accountant anyway. Um, these are not huge research projects. If you talk to students in other master's programs, they have to do major theses and things like that. We're talking, I think the most is about a 10 page paper, 10 to 12 page paper in the program. So we're talking smaller projects. So it might be, you know, a two to three page memo on what you found in tax research. In my class, you do a 10 page paper on a new technology and how is it affecting accounting. So it's a lot different than what most master's programs would have you do. Um, I've heard my salary won't increase with the, master, with the MAC or CPA. Um, it may not in the short term. But I would, I would say in many cases, long-term it does. So it's a faster rise than others. And there's a salary survey by the Institute of Management Accounts that shows if you have a certification and a master's degree, it was about over $100,000 extra over uh, a career. 
So it, it does add up. So, and there's different combinations, which certification or a master's. All right, I'm gonna let you digest that for a second. I forgot to start these out. So if you wanna kinda, I have actually, I just have to get this around. It's a sign up sheet. If you would put your name on there, that will make sure you are on a list. My contact list of students that are interested in the MAC. I'll be sending out some information, including a recording to this session, as well as um, a link to set up a time to meet with me to discuss the MAC, if you wish. Okay? So if you would pass that around and get your name on there, it would be greatly appreciated. All right. So now that if we've hopefully got you a little bit interested, um, what do you need to do in the MAC? So here's the require the courses and what what the requirements are to complete it. So first of all, there are four required classes, and that's our 12 hours, and then 18 hours of elective courses. So the required classes, uh, four courses that really help you become, I think, a little bit more well-rounded. First, financial accounting theory and analysis. This is very technical accounting where you look at companies and basically, you know, analyze their strengths, look at the financial ratios. I know they have huge project where they do quite a bit of analysis of a company of your choosing. Applied professional research, we alluded to that one earlier. So this is actually split up into two sections. Half of it will be tax research. So you have an example of a tax client where they have some type of situation. You need to look up in the actual code to determine what, how to treat whatever the scenario is from a tax perspective that year. And you have to be able to write a memo and explain it to them. The other half is with audit. So you need to know how to, you know, how you should treat this from an accounting perspective. So you have to look into the codification for GAAP and then, you know, make some determinations of what the right answer is, in your opinion. My favorite class, of course, I'm biased, is business analytics and accounting. Uh, so we do quite a bit of uh, different projects where we analyze data. We also look at how emerging technologies are used in companies through some Harvard business cases. Um, so it's actually a pretty fun class. We can do several things there as well. And then business law for the professional accountant. So kind of what it says, what do you need to know from a business law perspective in order to help practice in accounting? Uh, this is a requirement for the CPA exam. So that is something you would take here. We'll talk about the electives in a second. And the last thing you need is some experiential learning requirement. So an internship, whether or not you take it for credit. So here's the classes that some of you have, uh, may take for credit, or you can do VITA. It also could be work experience or the fact that you've done an internship. And even if and you didn't get credit for it, that would count too. Okay, so just having some type of internship or work experience in accounting. Um, and if you did have it uh, participating in our VITA, our income tax preparation also will count. Okay. All right, so we've talked that you need 18 electives. So um, the first thing is for electives is our RAN elective options. So this is where you can get a certificate in artificial intelligence in business. And this is actually in conjunction with the RAN School of Business, which is in France, about two and a half hours northwest of Paris. So it's actually divided down into four one-week classes, uh, data science, AI business intelligence, text learning, network intelligence, and they do change some of the topics each year. And that is actually worth six elective credits. We are hoping that some of the COVID situation kind of loosens up that international travel is a little bit a better option starting next year again. So um, keep this in mind and we can talk about that and get that into your plan. 
All right, so I kind of divided some of the electives down into two categories. If you're interested in audit or consulting, here's what I would recommend for potential electives. And we have one for tax, and, but yet you don't have to stick to one list or another. You can mix it up uh, as you wish or integrate other options in depending on your interest. And that's where I get so many different varieties of plans because every student's interested in a little bit different or on a different schedule. So that's where we can work together and try to find something that works for you. So if you're looking for audit, advanced accounting. So some students call this intermediate three, same types of things, um, government and nonprofit. So how do you account for government, you know, uh, the books in accounting for government entities or nonprofit agencies? And it works very different than traditional companies. Of course, doing your internship. And as a grad student, you could take an internship for up to six credits for your electives. OK, so that actually gets quite a few there. Starting next spring, we are going to have advanced audit which besides doing audit is going to have a heavy technical component. Um, fraud analytics is a May course. So this is how you analyze data to determine is there potential for fraud here? So it's kind of a fun class. I already mentioned the AI for business in REN. I have advanced tax here, even though it, it says audit, because honestly, you do need some understanding of corporate tax if you're going to audit. So I th still think that is very worthwhile for somebody in audit to consider. Tax, uh, of course, government nonprofit accounting, uh, depending on what firm you're going to would be very helpful because a lot of firms, you still audit government aid entities or you may audit nonprofit organizations. Of course, doing an internship for tax, uh, advanced tax, and the CPA exam, at least the version coming up when they revise, it's going to have a little bit more of a personal finance uh, component, so investments. Now, keep in mind, uh, the CPA exam will be changing in 2024, and we are working on potentially changing some of these electives to fit that exam a little bit more. So these are what's currently offered today, but depending on where you're at in your program, there may be changes, but that's where we could put together a preliminary schedule and work a little bit closer to a more finite schedule as you get closer to uh, that time. Then there's other electives that you may be interested in. Uh, the management department at times offers a project management class. Honestly, that's what everybody does sometime in the career is participate or help manage projects or at least a part of a project. So very helpful. <clears throat> business ethics. That's part of everyday life in business. So great class there. So one that students have found uh, very interesting and really enjoyed recently is compensation management. So, you know, trying to decide payroll and and uh, salaries, there, there's a lot more into that class than I actually was realizing at first. We've had some students take marketing research and marketing strategy. Sometimes it's OK to just add a class for that's completely different for fun. I think the more you can broaden your experiences, the great org behavior and actually it for any Mac elective, you can take any other business course that's a 5,000 level or above. There's actually some other courses on campus, like a public policy course that is also allowed, but really haven't had a lot of students take that. But if you're interested, that's where you can talk to me about any grad class on campus that has some tie to business. Sorry, music or something doesn't quite count, but if there's something that has a tie to business. All right, so when should you apply? The earliest you can really apply is the semester that you have are taking intermediate two. Um, and that's where, depending on what your schedule looks like, we may delay that just from, um, from mostly for our financial aid reasoning. If you're not going to take any graduate classes for another semester or two, we may delay it uh, for, for that. It's, it's usually 
as I said, just trying to kind of condense things a little bit from a financial aid perspective. And then during your undergraduate semesters, you may take graduate courses. So that once again, that'll depend on how many undergrad classes you have left at the time you're in intermediate will depend on that. Um, and your graduate credit is not counted toward the undergrad degree. So it's 120 credits that you need for your undergrad and 30 for your graduate. Uh, there's no double county. There are a couple programs on campus where that's starting to be the case, but that is not the case in a county, mostly because we need that magic 150 for the CPA exam. Okay. So this is, these are details that I can work out with you. Um, I forgot I had this. So kind of here how we can lay out the class. In the fourth year, you might finish up and get, you know, um, three to nine, oops, three to nine credits undergrad during that summer. You can get up to 12. Think about internship or REN or two classes and internship are 12 credits you can get during the summer if we need to. You, then your fifth year, you take your four required classes plus three electives. And in the fifth year, you do your CPA review. The CPA review are undergrad, that class is undergrad credits. So if you still need a few more credits to get to that 120, you can actually use the CPA review classes. And then usually you take one, one elective, some students take two. Once in a while, we have some students that need to take something in May term. So it just depends on what your schedule is. And I will be sending out these slides so um, to everybody who signed up on the sign-in sheet. So make sure your name gets on there. Okay, so your, your question, you're all excited. The question is, how do I apply? So first of all, I briefly mentioned it, your admission requirements. So you need a 3.0 overall, and that's requirement from the graduate college. Um, you will not be fully admitted until after you've completed Intermediate 2 and AIS. We can have you apply before so you can get registered for the following semester's courses, but you'll fully be admitted after you complete those and those grades are in. You should have a B minus or better average on all of your upper level classes. So that's everything, intermediate one, cost, intermediate two, AIS, and then ultimately tax and audit. <clears throat> if you have an overall GPA of 3.0 and you um, are UNI grad, you, and you've taken all of your upper level county classes here, you do not need to take the GMAT. So you can ignore that GMAT score. So then we're just looking at your grades and making sure that your county grades are 3.7 or, or 2.7 or above. Didn't mean to panic anybody over there with the 3.7. So B minus or above, okay? So that's kind of our admissions requirement. To apply, oh, I don't actually have that on here. To apply, you go to the grad school page and there's a big button at the bottom that says apply here. But usually you'll want to have a conversation with me so we know what semester you should put in as your start date. As I said, the reason that's important is mostly from financial aid. So I try to work it so uh, you're a grad student as few as semesters as possible because that increases cost. So we, we play around with that and depending on you, your situation, okay? <clears throat> So speaking of financial aid and finances, so tuition, if you're taking a minimum of one graduate classes, you're actually charged for that whole semester at graduate rates. And there's a reason for it. It's actually cheaper to do that than getting charged for nine undergrad and three graduate or whatever. So you get charged at graduate rate. The graduate rate is about $750 more per semester which honestly compared to a lot of schools, the differential between undergrad and grad is actually a lot more. So this is not too bad comparatively. And that's for the College of Business. Uh, financial aid, you'll be uh, classified as either an undergrad or grad. And that's why we kind of have to play around with your schedule when you apply. But that's, those are things that I will talk with you about. 
there are some scholarships that are specially for graduate students. So many of you will apply for scholarships in the Department of Accounting. If you're a grad student, you can apply twice, once as an undergrad and once as a grad. And that's another reason why we kind of play around with your dates a little bit there. The other thing is the graduate school offers additional scholarships, which you can only apply for as a graduate student here in the department. And that comes in two forms. One is a graduate assistant where you work either 10 to 20 hours a week for a faculty member. Help them do some grading, maybe look up some articles for research, write some summaries. It depends on which faculty member you're working with. Um, usually we, we try to make those assignments as flexible as possible so you don't have to be there at a particular time. And I'll be honest, you probably, depending on uh, not quite hitting the 10 hours a week if you're assigned for 10 hours a week, or at least on a consistent basis. And then in addition, there is a scholarship, okay, available through the graduate school that also kind of, so there's additional scholarships. Most of our grad students get a decent amount of financial aid from various sources, um, you know, between either GA and stuff. So we'll try to work that out as well. You'll have to, of course, apply and we'll, we'll talk through that as you get closer. So just generally, so some plan sheets. So as I mentioned, the four core classes you always take together and they're only in the fall. In the spring, you'll take your CPA review, but keep in mind those are undergraduate credits. So you do not get graduate credits. So that doesn't count towards your 18. But most students in the MAC are, do do the CPA and take the CPA review here. Why? Because we're pretty good at it to be perfectly honest. So our master's students have an extremely high pass rate. It's about 90% first time for those that went on for our master's students. The last data we had, it was 94%. 94% chance if you did your undergrad here and the MAC, not the last such a chance, but that's what it has been in the past, okay? So, and those that maybe did pass, it was one section that they had to retake. So a bad day does happen. All right, so some ways that we can get those 18 extra electives in. That's really what we have the playroom. You, you have one fall where you take all those courses, and then we can multi get those extra ones in. So one possibility is a spring internship. Maybe in the summer, you either take the REN program, AI and Business, or maybe there's two courses typically offered each summer. So one or the other. You may still be taking some undergrad credits. You could take one more elective with those four classes here. Usually, most students are taking advanced tax at the same time as CPA review, and that gets you your 18 electives. As I said, I'm going to send these out, so don't, fran you know, just to give you some ideas of how to make your schedule. And once again, I will help through all that. That's, as I said, everybody's schedule is so different. Um, it's a little puzzle that we get to put together every time. Uh, so fall, you may, maybe you can squeeze in elective here, one in the spring, a summer internship, and a couple more electives. Or you, we can move things around from the previous summer. Um, we have it, our red program usually is set up or even our coursework that you can usually take classes in May and start the internship in June. So kind of just another way you do the internship a little bit earlier, do some electives, a couple classes are run here in the summer, which then you only have to take four classes here. Some students do enjoy that. So just some combinations. As I said, don't worry about these details. This is what I will definitely help you with. All right. So what should you do now? So if you're early, I know we have some freshmen and sophomore here. Wonderful. This is something that you can start planning on this way. Talk to me. You can start those conversations with me now when I send out that email. I'd be happy to talk to you now. We can lay out uh, a plan. If you're a little bit further along in Intermediate 1, definitely 
this would be a great time to have an initial conversation just to start laying things out. Um, if you are have completed Intermediate 2, we probably should have you start to apply now. And some of that does vary, but at least let's start that conversation, double check the schedule. If you're currently in Intermediate 2, we can have you start applying now or at least have that conversation. We may have you put a subsequent later date. You can apply now, but have a later start date. As I said, mostly for financial aid reasons. If you haven't taken intermediate two, keep studying hard because I want to make sure we have that conversation with you later that we can go ahead and easily admit you. So if you're still unsure. I will be sending out these slides with a link to uh, the video. Feel free to still meet with me. Ask me all those questions. What, what about my situation? Um, if you have a plan from your undergrad advisor, bring that with. That actually helps us uh, get a bit of a schedule. So if you're ready to apply, uh, make an appointment with me and we'll create a plan of study. This will be kind of the path. That doesn't mean it's set in stone. We can make it flexible. Um, obviously, I forgot to change a date here. I'll be sending out an email and I'll be having what I appointment slots on my calendar. You can pick one that's convenient for you and we can have what, uh, a session either in my office or via Zoom, whichever works best for you. I'll probably be starting those next week and they'll run between off and on between now and when registration starts, which I believe is the end of March. Or you could just email me. My email's there, I'm easy to find. There's only a couple professors in the College of Business that start with I, and you've already seen me, so it's easy to pick me out. So that's really kind of the end of the formal uh, presentation here. I do wanna introduce Emily Doniker. She is a current Mac student. She just got out of uh, two and a half, two hours of CPA review, and hopefully this video did work. Well, we didn't have me in there, but that's okay. We'll find that out. But so Emily, can I ask you one question? Why would you recommend the Mac? Um, I would say one, now that I'm in CPA review, I'm super thankful I did it because there's like a decent amount of things in our grind book where it's like, okay, like because I'm in the Mac, like I've heard of that. Or like I definitely know. Um, there's a research class in the Mac and on the CPA, you like use all your research skills and so it's like okay like you're not starting from like the bare bottom like I actually know like how to do those so probably that and also just like going into it I was like oh I don't know if I want to double major or like do the math but I just like liked accounting more than my other classes and so uh, just that and again with like the CPA some of the classes like you get dual credit for like you can take it as math class and you would have had to take them if you were taking the CPA anyway. So it's like, okay, right. you might as well just get a master's. Yeah, so advanced accounting, GMP, you could take as an undergrad in order to meet the requirements to take the CPA, or you can count them for your electives for the master's. So you might end up having to take that class anyway to meet your 150 hours for the CPA exam, but you can either count it as undergrad or graduate. So possibly graduate work. If you plan ahead, you can end up just taking a handful of extra classes because some of these classes you would have taken anyway. Um, you, you're probably going to take government now probably because it can, it can be up to like 15% of one section of the exam. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to take it uh, advanced accounting and you're probably going to take advanced tech because that's corporate tax. Um, mm -hmm. Those are classes that you're going to take for undergrad credit, for grad credit. Um, you throw an internship on there um, now you're, you know, halfway to the master's degree, you're going to take business law. So are you going to take it for undergrad or are you going to take the grad business law? Well, if you're doing the grad, now you're just taking the grad business law. Now you really